resting gently on the slopes of the Apennines, Umbria is a unique and captivating territory. This is an evocative place where the perfect symbiosis between art and nature gives the landscape an atmosphere of mysticism, ascetic beauty and timeless charm. Moving up the valley, along the outline of the mountain, beautiful villages evoke the splendour of a heroic and intriguing past. From the castle walls and in the squares and streets full of history, you can hear the echoes of the joyful sound of joisting coming. Triumphant voices ring out from the crowds, mesmerized by the waving of flags and the golden, ruby-red reflections of these vivid memories. Meanwhile, higher up, amidst the mountain peaks and ridges, lie solitary hermitages and abbeys. Glimpses of unspoiled nature, enriched over time by a historical legacy. It was here that the old Via Flaminia, a vital lifeline in ancient Rome, began to make its way. It was also here that some centuries later, St. Francis walked along what became known as the Franciscan Path of Peace, and which, still today, is a physical and spiritual link between Assisi and Gubbio. Mount Cucco majestically dominates the valley, lending its generous plateaus to anyone brave enough to try the experience of flight. At the same time, through impressive passageways, it reveals the wonders of its caves. You can travel along the numerous paths on horseback, on foot or by mountain bike and experience the charm of this territory. Ancient and wise like its mountains, and deep and transparent like its pure springs and emerald lakes. All this is the district of Gubbio Gualdo, and we will be discovering it on our journey. Our journey starts in Val Fabrica, with its history closely linked to the building and the destiny of the Benedictine Monastery of St. Maria in Vado Fabrice. This is one of the oldest and most important convents in Umbria, and it stands on the Franciscan Path of Peace, the road that St. Francis took to reach Gubbio after leaving his hometown of Assisi. Along the main road, you will come across the Church of the Madonna della Sunta, which has been completely restructured and contains a splendid fresco, the only example of the Cimabue school in Umbria. The town has maintained intact its 13th century walls, the highest tower of the medieval castle known as the Pedicino, and the beautiful 14th century church of San Sebastiano. The Val Fabrica area is dotted with numerous castles and fortified towers. Among the most picturesque locations, the village of Casa Castalda deserves a visit. It was founded around 763 AD and its houses were all built entirely in stone. Inside the church of Santa Maria della Sunta, there is a lovely triptych by Matteo da Gualdo. Other places worth visiting are the sanctuary of the Madonna dell'Olmo and the monument to motorbike riders, around which important motorcycle rallies are organized periodically. Val Fabrica hosts one of the area's most interesting events, the Festival of Autumn. This is a true reenactment of medieval ceremonies in their original solemnity. On the first Sunday of September, the three present-day districts of Badia, Osteria and Pedicino take part in a procession along the streets of the town, bringing back to life scenes and episodes of the Middle Ages. After the procession, the knights of the three districts compete in a joust to win the palio, or prize. Moving away from Val Fabrica, we are getting closer to the hills of Gualdo Tadino, surrounded by the gentle, almost fairy tale landscape of Val Sorda, at the foot of Mount Serra Santa. The ancient Tadinum Town Hall, which is mentioned in the Iguvine tablets, 
was gradually destroyed over the centuries as a result of numerous battles. Thanks to Frederick II, however, it was reconstructed in the 13th century. The emperor built very sturdy, extensive castle walls surrounding the town, joining high up on the flanks of the Rocca Flia fortress and fortified by 17 towers protecting the numerous sacred and historical buildings. Many of these towers are still visible today. In the main square of the town, you will find the town hall with its splendid council chamber and the Palazzo del Podesta. Today, home to the Regional Museum of Emigration. The recently restored Casa Cagliani is also worth mentioning and contains, among other things, an interesting history of ancient plants. Among the numerous historical and artistic religious buildings are the Cathedral of St. Benedict and the Church of St. Francis. Gualdo is known not only for its architectural wonders, but also for its secular tradition in the production of shiny Maiolica tiles. The Rocchetta, famous for the diuretic and purifying properties of its clear waters, gushes amidst the century-old woods and pure water springs. During the last weekend of September, the town holds the Giochi delle Porte, a festive reenactment from the latter part of the Middle Ages, in which four doors compete against each other for the Palio of Archangel Michael. Heading north, following the outline of the mountain, we come to Fossato di Vico. Still today, this village has maintained intact its distinctive walls and towers, within which a perfectly preserved rare example of castle architecture can be found, known as Le Rughe. Picturesque lanes are sheltered by round stone vaults, pointed arches and ceilings made from wooden planks. The main square is dominated by a tall clock tower. Not far from here, you can visit the medieval building that was originally the town's first municipal building. Since 2001, it has been host to the town antiquarium. The old town hall building is located in Via del Forno, which takes its name from the two pan venale ovens created in the basement. One of the two ovens was operational until 1953. A little further on, we find another two particularly interesting buildings, dating back to the 13th century. These are the little church of Santa Maria la Piagiola and le Caceri, or prisons. Numerous sacred buildings embellish the village. In the upper part of the village is the church of St. Peter, dug partly out of the rock. While just outside the walls stands the church of St. Benedict, a monastic settlement dating back to the 13th century. During the month of May, Fossato is the scene of a spectacular historical reenactment, the Festa degli Statuti, festivity of the statutes, celebrating the moment in which the village became a free community. A few kilometers further on, we come to Sigillo, called Suilum in ancient time. This was a Roman municipality of the 6th Augustan region and was very important because of its location along the Via Flaminia. The ruins of the imposing Ponte Spiano are still visible today. The town was destroyed during the barbarian invasions and rebuilt by its citizens in 1247 around the church of Pieve di Sant'Andrea in which a 16th century painting Tella del Rosario, as well as a painting of the Madonna with Child. At the center of the village, 
you will find the very unusual Piazza dei Martiri. It is embellished by slabs of pink stone from Assisi and by geometric compositions made of travertine, acting as a setting for the Palazzo Comunale Town Hall building. The Palazzo Comunale was built in the 12th century, with its neoclassical facade built in 1802. Near the square stands the Church of St. Augustine, built upon the foundations of the ancient Church of St. Catherine, of which only the medieval crypt still remains today. Today, this beautiful village, surrounded by greenery, is home to the Mount Cucco Regional Park, accessible from numerous paths that begin in Sigilio, and allow you to discover the mountains on foot or by mountain bike, traveling through some very evocative scenery, like that of the Val Ranco Valley. We leave Sigillo and move on to the nearby village of Costacharo, once an important military outpost defending the territory of Gubbio. Today, the medieval features of the village's ancient surrounding walls and its charming bastions are still intact. The Rivellino, an impressive tower with its unique shape resembling the prow of a ship, built by Francesco di Giorgio Martini upon request of Federico da Montefeltro, Porta Civica, and the clock tower. Walking along the town's main street, it is impossible not to notice the impressive Roman Gothic facade of the Church of St. Francis, dating back to the 13th century, and erected in limestone from Mount Cucco. It is worth going inside to see the interior embellished with splendid 17th century altars. The chapel, that holds the remains of the blessed patron St. Tommaso, and several clues indicating that the church was possibly frequented by the Knights Templar. The mountain has always been very important to Costa Charo. Today, an ideal gateway through which you can reach the Mount Cook Original Park and for its many sporting activities. Furthermore, the activity of potholing must not go forgotten. In fact, from Costa Charo, you can get into the Grotto of Mount Cucco with its 30 kilometers of tunnels, making it one of the major subterranean systems in Europe. Up to about 800 meters of it can be visited on adventurous guided tours. As we continue along our route, we come to the village of Skedja, which became a municipality together with the town of Pascelupo in 1878. Of the town's medieval history, only a few traces of the castle, the civic tower, and a single arch remain intact today. Skeja e Pascelupo is a popular destination for many tourists who are particularly attracted by the mystical charm of the surrounding area. Along the Benedictine Trail, in a completely uncontaminated environment, stand undisturbed the Abbey of Citria, founded by St. Romaldo between 1018 and 1021, the Abbey of St. Emiliano in Congiuntoli, and near Pascelupo, the Hermitage of St. Girolamo of Mount Cucco. This hermitage can only be visited by small groups of men. Moving along the Flaminia A road towards Fan, you can visit the bold Ponte a Botte, or Barrel Bridge, also known as the Gran Botte d'Italia. Scheggia e Pascilupo is surrounded by the peaks of the Apennine, rich vegetation and wildlife. Framed by impressive rocky peaks, we come across the gorges of the Corno, the Catria and the Valle delle Pigione, the Valley of the Prisons, which you can visit and where you will enjoy the magnificent landscape of waterfalls and ponds. Particularly evocative events are the celebration of the Taglio del Maggio and the Corsa delle Bighe. He 
here we are at the end of our trail in Gubbio, at the foot of Mount Ingino. Walking through its streets and squares, among its churches and buildings, you can retrace the footsteps of a rich and turbulent past. Known by the name of Id Ecuvium, Gubbio was an important Umbrian city-state as testified by the Iguvin tablets, seven bronze tablets from pre-Roman times. In the upper part of the town stands the Ducal Palace, the Palazzo Ducale, built during the rule of the Duke of Montefeltro of Urbino. Inside, there is a beautiful courtyard corresponding to the space previously occupied by the ancient town square and you can also visit the beautiful study of Duke Frederick. In front of the palace stands the cathedral in which there is an important Baroque chapel. Gubbio's historic old town is full of monuments for you to visit starting with a 14th century urban complex consisting of Palazzo dei Consoli inside which you can admire some historical pieces of traditional luster style ceramics. Then there is the Palazzo Pretorio and the square of Piazza Grande with its suspended courtyard completed towards the end of the 15th century. In addition to the historical buildings and the medieval town walls, Gubbio is full of religious buildings, like St. John's Church, Chiesa di San Giovanni, in the square of the same name. The religious buildings linked to Franciscan history are very different and include the Church of St. Francis, which is the last stop along the Franciscan path of peace, and the tiny church of Santa Maria della Vittorina. The traditional Corsa dei Ceri, the race of the candles, is an event not to be missed, featuring gigantic wooden structures that look like candles, weighing approximately four tons each. The race takes place every year on the 15th of May. The Ceraioli, those who carry the wooden candles or cherry, run through Gubbio's town center, and up to the Basilica of St. Ubaldo, patron saint of Gubbio, is situated on the summit of Mount Dingino and can be reached by taking a spectacular cable car. The Gubbio Gualdo district is a territory in which you will find all the necessary elements for combining food and wine with culture, from the cured meats and sausages served with the typical Easter cake or crescia bread to the classic bruschetta bread flavored with our excellent local olive oil. There is a wide variety of pulses and delicious first course dishes as well as char grilled meat and game. And lastly, black and precious white truffles from the forest floor. This concludes our journey through the spectacular landscape and charming villages of a territory still to be discovered.